it's one thing to learn about the principles of companion planting and succession planting. I have another video that goes into great detail about those principles. But it's another thing to see them in action. And in today's video, I'm going to take you on a tour of my garden and show you how I implement both companion planting and succession planting. These two techniques improve my harvest and reduce the amount of time I have to spend battling pests and diseases. My name's Angela from Growing in the Garden. I garden in Mesa, Arizona in Zone 9B. I love sharing garden inspiration and helpful tips so you can be successful in your garden. Here are a few key points to remember. Companion planting can help you deter pests, improve your soil, and increase your yield. Succession planting allows you to plant multiple crops in the same space throughout the growing seasons. My garden isn't a perfect example of companion planting, but I do try and implement a lot of those practices in my garden. And as we walk around and look at the different beds, I will point out those different principles and hopefully you'll get some ideas of ways that you can implement them in your own garden. One example of succession planting is this bed. Right now the main thing that you can see growing is all of this gray zucchini. We've got four different plants that have really taken up the space in this bed. They'll begin producing here and produce for several weeks and then be done. But what you may not see is the Roselle hibiscus that has been planted in this bed as well and is ready to take over this space once the squash is done. There's one plant here and then there's another plant right here. Both the Roselles will happily take up almost this entire bed once these squash are finished. Another example of succession planting in this same bed is the sweet potato slip that I have planted here, and I believe there's another one over there. So sweet potatoes and roselle are excellent companion plants. As the squash finish up, the roselle will take over the high ground and then the sweet potatoes will cover this bed as kind of a living mulch. One of my favorite ways to implement companion planting is by planting at least one herb and one flower in each bed, typically on the ends of the beds. So in this bed, you'll see I have sage growing, got some lobelia, verbena, and then this dill, which has gone to seed, and you will see all stages of ladybugs growing. It's definitely a magnet for lots of beneficial insects. There are lacewing eggs, ladybug eggs, ladybug larvae all over this dill. And then we have some more flowers on the end of the bed over here. So we've got the Super Sweet 100 tomatoes here with dill, a favorite companion of tomatoes, and also basil. Basil here and basil here and also a smaller tomato plant right there surrounded by that basil and also the marigolds. Dill, marigolds, and basil are all excellent companions for tomatoes. In this same bed, there is also another squash plant that will get larger, take over this bed a little bit, and then finish up. And there's also a roselle plant here ready to take over this bed once that squash plant finishes up. Arguably the most famous example of companion planting is the Three Sisters Garden. I have squash growing, corn, the beans have sprouted down there. So squash, corn, beans, and a couple of sunflowers here as part of a Three Sisters Garden. So the corn will grow tall, the beans will climb the corn, the squash will shade the soil, They'll all work together and be mutually beneficial. So I have four different grow bags with those same companion plants in there. I'm hoping by putting these grow bags together with the three sisters growing and that fourth sister sunflower that the pollination rates will increase. So we'll see, corn can be tricky to grow, not always great at growing it, which is why I put in those couple of sunflowers and I will keep you posted on their progress.
with the squash here growing. This is butternut squash and then some cucumbers here. We've got the basil, onions, which are an excellent companion plant, and some tomatoes here. Then the Ichoi onions that are ready to harvest for sure there. And then this bolting parsley, along with lots of flowers, the bachelor buttons. See the ladybug there climbing up happily. So that bolting parsley is bringing a lot of the beneficial insects. We've got the pollinators from the flowers. We've got basil, tomatoes in there, and then the cucumbers and squash growing happily. So not a lot of one item here, but lots of different things working together in this four by eight bed. So let's talk about this bed. So right now, the biggest things that you can see are the squash plants in here that are producing, taking up a lot of the bed. So they'll keep producing and get rather large, but then they will finish up as it heats up. And then in their place, we've got some okra that is growing and developing here. I think there's three. Oh yeah, there's the third plant. So three plants that will grow tall and be at the end of this bed. Ready to get larger too will be the eggplants. We've got an eggplant here and there and a pepper, a couple of pepper plants. Then at the end of the bed, we have the tomatoes and beans climbing. And mixed in with all of that, you'll find all the flowers, like gonfrina, straw flower, along with the herbs. The bolting parsley, a favorite of ladybugs and other beneficial insects. Growing on the Friar Trellis, which is a new addition to the garden, we have some Armenian cucumbers here, the Painted Serpent, which is a favorite variety for sure. So there's a lot of Armenian cucumbers along there. And then mixed in, we've got the zinnias. And also on the other side of the bed, along with some sunflowers, ready to attract all those beneficial insects and add beauty to the garden. Strawberries can have a tough time through our hot summers surviving. So what I've done here is I went ahead and planted some sunflowers in this bed and outside of the bed to shade these strawberry plants, to hopefully give them some natural shade to get these strawberries to last through the hot summer months. Adding annual herbs like cilantro and dill and parsley to your garden and then allowing them to flower and stay in your garden at the end of the season will promote biodiversity. You're going to bring in a lot of beneficial insects. As you look around my garden, you'll see a wide variety of different types of flowers. And each type of flower is going to attract different types of pollinators. As you plan your garden, look for ways you can incorporate different types of flowers. There are many flowers and herbs that are easily started from seeds. That's it for the tour of my garden. I hope you enjoyed seeing companion planting and succession planting in action. Every garden and every climate is different. So experiment with some of these techniques and find out what works for you in your garden. If you have experiences and successes to share, please let me know in the comments. I would love to learn from you. Thank you so much for watching.